Hello, I'm Dr. Priya Tiramalasetti, and I'm excited to present to you today this uber nerdy lecture on restoring endodontically treated teeth. The lecture will be broken down into several sections as follows. Basic concepts, prevention of coronal microleakage, evaluating what's remaining before and after endodontic treatment, posts, direct fiber and resin post and core, the final restoration, and minimally invasive concepts in restoring endodontically treated teeth. And lastly, aesthetics and non-mitral bleaching. Let's start off with basic concepts. When researching this topic to write this lecture, I reviewed many research papers and journal articles. There's a wealth of information regarding this restoration of endodontically treated teeth. How do we as practitioners decide what method or material is optimal and correct for our purposes? Is it all accurate? I've tried to compose an evidence-based presentation that you can incorporate into your everyday practice. We've heard the term evidence-based a lot. What does it actually mean? In the book Critical Thinking, Dr. Donald Maxwell Brunette defines evidence-based dentistry as the focus on integrating evidence and patient preferences into clinical decision-making. Dr. Brunette recommends the following steps in evidence-based decision-making. Number one, ask the question. Number two, acquire the evidence. Number three, appraise the evidence for validity and clinical relevance. Four, apply the evidence to practice. Five, assess the results and modify practice as needed. So Dr. Burnett also states that in clinical journals, readers need to keep in mind that results of a single trial are often reported, and it is possible that experts with different biases will disagree with the results of the trial. Fisher R.A. in the Design of Experiments wrote, the test of a firm conclusion is repeated studies, each of which demonstrates statistical significance. In real life, however, it may be difficult to perform repeated studies in the dental field because there's so much variability in our patients and the materials are costly. The ADA in its book, How to Use Evidence-Based Dental Practices to Improve Your Clinical Decision-Making, defines EBD as an approach to oral health care that requires the judicious integration of systematic assessments of clinically relevant scientific evidence relating to the patient's oral and medical condition and history with the dentist's clinical expertise and the patient's treatment needs and preferences. A lot of words there, but returning to our lecture, to the topic of restoring endodontically treated teeth. I may present several options on a given subsection so that you, the viewer, can make an informed, evidence-based decision and incorporate it into your protocol. In dentistry, as you know, it's possible to approach treatment with multiple options. So remember that each patient is different and your clinical expertise should be tailored to each individual situation. Minimizing risk of failure and postponing failure. The clinical success of an endodontically treated teeth, which I'll also refer to as ETT, depends on multiple factors. Taking steps to minimize risk of failure allows for the greatest chance of success and long-term retention of an ETT. Removal of caries. So when endodontic treatment is complete, it is the restorative dentist's responsibility to ensure that all decay is removed conservatively without unnecessarily removing healthy tooth structure. The goal is to effectively remove decay while preserving as much healthy tooth structure as possible. The amount of tooth structure remaining after caries removal greatly affects the prognosis of the tooth. So the more that's remaining, the better the long-term prognosis. Number two, use of a rubber dam minimizes recontamination during restoration. Number three, evaluate the existing periodontal support and also the amount of occlusal forces the tooth will bear when deciding on the final restorations. The location of a tooth in the arch matters as terminal teeth, and especially those supporting a fixed or removable partial denture, are at a greater risk of fracture. Number four, there are contradicting studies regarding whether or not a post is beneficial in restoring an ETT. Newer studies advise that a post is almost never beneficial. And there's also controversy about the bleaching of ETTs due to the risk of future cervical resorption. Again, you, the restoring dentist, should make decisions on each individual case using evidence-based principles.